So then, Eddie Howe has spoken to the media ahead of tomorrow's massive game against Arsenal at St James's Park. Of course, it's the late afternoon kickoff, and we are expecting an absolute cracker. So let's see what the manager had to say ahead of the game. <laughs> Hi everyone, I'm Paul. Welcome back to the Toon Review YouTube channel and of course today's show is the press conference and we're just having a look at what Eddie Howe had to say uh, about the game and about certain players. There wasn't much said to be honest. Uh, it was a very sombre press conference if I can say that. It was, you know, not a lot of main questions were asked again which is disappointing but we say that every press conference. There's just not enough good enough questions asked to the manager. Um, I don't want to see Eddie Howe put on the spot under pressure with questions, but just ask certain questions about certain players. Again, Sven Botman, very, very quiet on that as well. So a little disappointing with the questions. Uh, but if you do enjoy today's show, guys, please don't forget to give it the thumbs up. Very important that we keep the likes coming in on the channel so that fellow fans like yourselves can find us in the search results on YouTube and hopefully subscribe in the future. And of course, don't forget, if you are new, please do hit the subscribe button. It is completely free to do so. And of course, hit the notification bell which will let you know when we schedule our live shows which is practically every day and of course we upload any recorded videos such as this one that I'm doing now so thank you in advance for that right ahead of the game talking about Arsenal Eddie said Arsenal last year it speaks for itself what they achieved uh, I think they have moved on from that last year mentally moved on and stepped it up they are unbeaten it's a really big test of our credentials we are going to have to find ways to make it very difficult for them but we are looking forward to the game so again he's not overbigging it with Arsenal he's not saying that you know they're going to come here and wipe the floor of us or anything like that Eddie knows how good Arsenal are and how good they can be they are unbeaten this season. They've played some very, very good football and have some very, very dangerous players. However, I also think that we have those sort of players as well. And I don't think Arsenal will particularly look forward to coming to St. James's Park. Now, we need to make sure as fans that St. James's Park is rocking this time, not like it was against Dortmund. Very, very quiet. Um, you know, we've seen that in a, in a few games lately at St. James's where the, the volume just hasn't been there for, for whatever reason that may be. I don't know. But it does need to step up. We need that atmosphere back at St. James's Park because as the players have already explained, it helps them. It helps them massively when the you know when the crowd are up for it, the volume is there, and everybody's on the same page. And the Newcastle players, they know the songs. We've seen them do videos about it before in the past where um, Newcastle United players have had the songs played in front of them and they've sang them and they've recognised them. So they do know and they do appreciate all the noise that St. James's Park can make and certainly you know tomorrow night is one of those where we take on Arsenal who are expected to be you know one of the top certainly top two this season in uh, them in Manchester City but we can have a big say in this you know we are quietly climbing that league again after a little bit of a rocky start we're climbing the league again very quietly very nonchalantly and you know we just need to keep that going as far as I'm concerned and as long as the you know the press just leave us alone We'll be fine. You know, we are moving up that table. And tomorrow is a massive, massive game for us. Let's not underestimate Arsenal. You know, th this is a huge game at St. James's Park. Arsenal playing very, very well this season. Very good players. Very good uh, manager. Apart from when he's on the sidelines, he, you know, completely loses the plot sometimes. But you know what I mean? He's a good manager. He's got them playing some great football. And it will be a very difficult game for Newcastle. But... We are on fire right now. Let's not forget that. We are on absolute fire. And this is going to be one of those games where if we play well, I don't think Arsenal will beat us. And I think it's very important, and Eddie will probably say this to players, that you know we don't want to lose the game. Whatever happens, we don't want to lose the game. But if we go out with the same mentality we went out against Manchester United on Wednesday night, I think we win the game. I really do. I think St. James's Park is, a, is going to become a fortress now. And we just need to continue with this fantastic form. Yes, it will be a very, very different team to the one that turned up against Manchester United. But the same mentality applies. And I think that's very, very important uh, for not just Eddie Howe, but for the players as well. Um, now, onwards, he went to talk about Matt Target. Now, Matt Target, of course, lasted a few minutes against Manchester United. Um, he's had some terrible injuries since he's been at Newcastle. Of course, came in uh, when Eddie Howe came in. He brought him in in January, did brilliantly well for us at left back. Uh, Dan Byrne then came in and has established himself as the left back at Newcastle United. Um, very unfortunate for Matt Target because, you know, Eddie Howe does like him, does really rate him as a player. Um, and it's just one of those things, again, isn't it? Just these 
niggling little injuries that creep, keep creeping up on Newcastle United, and it's such a shame. Um, having said that, you know, <laughs> Miggy came on and, and scored a brilliant goal and played really well on Wednesday, so we were covered in that aspect. Uh, but what he said is it doesn't look good for Matt Target. He is having his scan today, so we will know more today. Uh, when you have a hamstring injury, you fear the worst. It's a real blow to lose him. He is a top player. Now, obviously, we know that Eddie's going to be rotating the squad throughout this season because of the games that we have, etc. And, it, you know, having Matt Target there is is massive for Eddie Howe. But unfortunately, now he's injured. So the rotation of the squad will change again. Um, yes, Miggy is, is fit as a fiddle and can, can do that role. Uh, Lewis Hall came in and did remarkably well on Wednesday night. So we do we do have that depth now that I think a lot of fans didn't think we had because of various injuries and because a lot of those players that played on Wednesday night were from the previous regime and us as fans had written them off completely. Uh, so I think this is huge for us as a football club uh, that we now have these players who are, I don't know, re-injected with belief and and have, have really stepped the game up. So um, it's a disaster for Matt Target, of course, because he's he's fighting back from a long-term injury. He's come back. He's starting to get a few games, making subs appearances as well. And now it's, he's just been cut out again. Um, and it's a real, real shame. But we wish Matt Target the very best of luck. And obviously, hopefully, when he gets that scan, it's not as bad uh, as first thought. Now, on Wednesday night, which was an, just an incredible night for anyone associated with Newcastle United, um, of course, the media have turned it all on Man United and how poor they are and what a crisis they're in. And not much said about the performance from the lads on Wednesday night, given the team that we put out. Uh, but Eddie said it was great to be able to give everyone an opportunity, uh, and I thought they responded magnificently. It was a brilliant team effort. Uh, I thought the spirit, determination, and collective mindset was of the highest level. Uh, we are in a good place mentally after the win. The whole squad will be lifted by that performance. So again, exactly what I was saying just there. You know, despite the 11 who were on the pitch, it's a squad game, and the whole squad came together as one on, on Wednesday night. You know, those that were thrust in from... Um, um, from the abyss, really. I mean, you look at Emil Kraft, he, he'd never played for 14 months because of that awful injury he got at Tranmere and came in and played the full 94 minutes and played absolutely magnificently. Paul Dummett, never put a foot wrong. You know, you, you've got to look at these players from the previous regime and think, wow, how good did they play? And for me, it's all down to the manager. You know, this manager has reinstalled massive belief in a lot of players who we as fans had written off. And just the performance from everybody on Wednesday was incredible. But it's also that belief in the dressing room. It's not just on that field. You know, those players on the field did a job, but the whole squad came together at the end, applauded the fans. You know, they're all as one, and the, the morale in that dressing room is absolutely fabulous at the moment. And the confidence is right up there, which I think we'll go into tomorrow's game against Arsenal. So... I think it's very important that we as fans recognise that. And like I said before, give this team the belief. Give the team the support. Even if they have a slow start against Arsenal, we know what they're capable of. We know we can come back into the game, etc. You know, so all we might have a blinding start, but it's important that we keep that noise level up at St. James's Park. Not just if we score early and, and sing for a bit and then it goes quiet midway through the half. We need to be on top of that for the full game. And I think the fans will because of what happened on Wednesday night. You know, that belief is incredibly there now amongst the players and the fans. The, the whole football club uh, is together as one at the minute. No matter how many people in the media try and shout us down or don't give us the credit that we deserve, those players understand what they mean to the fans and, and vice versa. You know, you could see Joe Linton singing with the fans after the game. That is what I'm talking about. We've never had that for such a long time and, until Eddie came in. and He's just given everybody, he's reinvigorated players that we thought were just finished and had no chance at the football club. But when you look at the performances of the players that played in that previous regime, you look at their performance on Wednesday night and you tell me, who is to thank for that? It's Eddie Howe because of what he's reinstalled into these players, the training that he does with these players, the belief he gives them, the man management, it's all there. And of course, it's not just Eddie, it's it's the coaching staff, Tyndale, Jones, the rest of them. Just brilliant. They, they, they really give these players the belief they need and, you know, confidence that they need. So I think, you know, Wednesday night, we can really use, uh, use on, on Saturday against Arsenal. Uh, the belief, the confidence, the way we played, everything. Uh, now, finally, um, on Joe Willock. Now, I am just 
making, you know, that this video is just the main points, I think, that came out of his press conference. Uh, there wasn't a lot, to be honest. Uh, but Joe Willock, he said, I think Joe deserves a lot of credit for his performance because of his athleticism. His speed and his general game was there after a long absence. He was making runs from the first minute. He is a huge player for us. I'm so glad he scored. Uh, that would have done him the world of good. Um, absolutely 100%. And it's great to see Joe Willock back. And the Joe Willock that we all know and love, breaking forward like that after Joe Linton's tackle uh, the other night, breaking into the, just outside the box and curling a wonderful shot into the corner. I mean, you know, the, the confidence of Joe might have been a little bit rocked and not fully confident of his hamstring and things like that. It's always like that when you come back from an injury such as what he's come back from. But he's been out so long. And the the way he scored the goal, the belief that that will give him again, just to get the ball and run at defenders. We know Joe Willock is capable of so much. And, you know, now it's time that these players are recognised by the England manager, as far as I'm concerned. The likes of Sean Longstaff, Anthony Gordon, um, you know, Willock himself, some even saying Dan Byrne, the way he's playing at the moment. You've got to give these players the credit that they deserve uh, by England call-ups, as far as I'm concerned. And I'm not the only Newcastle fan that believes that. I think there's a lot of Newcastle fans out there who are really now believing that these guys should be part of the England squad. And if they're not in the next one, serious, serious questions would have to be asked. Because I think... Eddie believes that these players deserve an opportunity and the fans believe as well. They've earned that right to be in the England squad. You know, Newcastle United are at the top end of the, the Premier League now. They're doing really well in Europe. We, we've just knocked out the two Manchester clubs uh, in the Carabao Cup. You know, we've got to be taken seriously. We've got to be taken as having fabulous players, international class players, and these guys deserve their opportunity. But let me know in the comments below. Do you think it's about time now that these players deserve their international call-ups? Are you happy to miss them out just so they get a rest? I don't know. You know, it swings and roundabouts, certainly with England, isn't it? Um... You know, will they go with England? Will they get an opportunity or will they just train? I don't know. Uh, but I think it would be nice for them to be recognised and certainly for the football club itself as well, uh, for these players to get international call-ups. Uh, I think it's critical. You know, if we can get three or four players in the international squad, that then raises the stakes of the club level again. So... For me, it'll be magnificent. Uh, but let me know in the comments below what you think and, of course, what Eddie's had to say on the other players as well. Thank you very much for watching. As I said at the start, guys, if you have enjoyed today's show, uh, please do hit the thumbs up button uh, so that other fans can find this channel uh, and hopefully subscribe in the future through the search results on YouTube. And if you're new, please do subscribe. Come and be part of this wonderful community we have on the Toon Review, heading towards 25,000 now. It's free to do so. And also the notification bell, which will let you know when we schedule our live shows or we upload videos such as this. Uh, tonight, if you're watching this on the Friday, of course, we have the uh, Newcastle United Arsenal match preview. Uh, we'll be taking an in-depth look into both sides, what the possible lineups could be and tactics, etc. And the last part of the show, we may bring some fans on uh, live to chat to us about the result in midweek and, of course, uh, ahead of the Arsenal game. So it should be a cracking show tonight, so don't miss that. 7 o'clock right here on the Toon Review. But in the meantime, guys... Have a fantastic Friday afternoon and we will see you very, very soon. Take care.